Hi, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to learn what JWTs are and how we work with them in Python. Before getting started, I would like to say that JSON Web Tokens or JWTs are a standard and you can learn more about them in the RFC titled JSON Web Tokens JWT in the Internet Engineering Task Force website. This document is already part of the standards track, it's already official, and anything you want to learn about JWTs, you can find it in this document. Now, what are JSON Web Tokens? JSON Web Tokens are JSON documents that contain information. We call this information claims, and we can find different types of claims depending on the token that we're dealing with. A JSON Web Token has a, has a structure. First of all, it has a header. The header of the document tells us what type of document we're dealing with. That's the type property here. In this case, it tells us that this is a JWT, and it also contains an ALG property which tells us which algorithm was used to sign the token. I will talk more about the signature in a minute. The most important part of the JSON Web Token is the payload. The payload contains the information or claims that the JSON Web Token carries with itself. Then there is the signature. The signature confirms that the token is legit and was issued by the correct authorization server. JSON Web Tokens are encoded. And the type of encoding we use is called Base64 URL encoding. You can learn more about this type of encoding in um, in a different in a different RFC. It's the RFC that describes the different types of encoding that we can use in the context of websites. The most famously known is Base64. Base64 URL encoding is a type of Base64 encoding that uses characters which are considered safe for HTTP communication. A, an encoded JSON web token looks like this. You can see that this string contains three differentiated parts. They are separated by a period. The header is encoded in this part of the string, the payload is encoded in this part of the string, and the signature is this part of the string. This website that I'm using is called jwt.io, and I highly recommend you to use this website whenever you're working with JSON Web Tokens. It is very easy to use. The only thing you need to do is to paste the JSON Web Token on the left side panel of the application, and you will get the decoded headers and the payload, and you will also be able to verify the, the token signature by pasting your public key in this space. Now, what types of claims we can find in a JSON Web Token, that depends on the on the type of token that we are dealing with. In the context of Web APIs, we typically distinguish between two types of JSON Web Tokens, ID tokens and access tokens. ID tokens are tokens that identify a user. They contain information such as the user's name, maybe the surname, perhaps the birth date, the email, and some other personal details. Those JWTs should never be used to validate access to an API. The only purpose of those JWTs is to identify the user and typically are only used in the user interface to populate details about the user in the website. The second type of JWT is access token. Those are tokens that contain claims about the right of a user to access a certain resource or a website. Those are the kind of tokens that we use to validate user access to our APIs. Here is a sample of the kind of properties that we can find in an access token. We have properties such as the issuer, the server that issued the access token. We have subject, which is the user that this token belongs to. We have audience which is the target for which this token was issued. Audience is the API or the resource that this token claims the user has access to. We have this property IAT, which means issued at time. This is a timestamp of when the token was issued. We can use this timestamp in the server to calculate the age of the token. Another important property here is expiration, when the token expires. We shouldn't accept tokens in the server that have gone beyond the expiration date. And finally, we have a scope here. In this case, scope OpenID means that the token was issued using the OpenID Connect authentication standard. You can learn more about the token claims in this uh, website. It belongs to the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, and it's a website fully dedicated to the claims that we can find in JSON Web Tokens. You find the standard list of properties for access tokens at the top over here, and the rest of properties are claims that are typically used with ID tokens. Before we move on, I would like to say that tokens can be signed with two different types of algorithms. One of them is called HST56, and this algorithm is used to encrypt tokens with a secret. The second algorithm is RS256, and this algorithm is used to sign the token with a private key. In the case of RS256, we verify the token signature using the corresponding public key. I'm going to show you an example of generating JSON Web Tokens using both algorithms. First of all, let's get the environment set up. 
I've created a folder called JWT tutorial. In this folder, I'm going to create a pipenv environment with the dependencies that we need that we need to work on this project. Let's install those dependencies. First of all, I'm going to create the virtual environment with the version of Python that I would like to use for this project. I'm going to use Python 3.9, but you can use any other version of Python that you want. Now, let's install the dependencies. First of all, we're going to install PyJWT. Now we're going to install cryptography. All right, let's activate the environment. Now, let's see how we produce JSON Web Tokens. We're going to learn to produce JSON Web Tokens first with the HS256 algorithm, which uses a secret key to produce the token signature. Let's open a Python shell to see how we do that. First of all, we import the JWT library. We're going to import also the date time library. And we're also going to import the time delta function because we're going to use it to. There was a typo there. We're going to use it to create the expiration dates. And let's define a payload now. I already have a payload already defined. Yes, I'm just going to paste it here. Uh, I need to define a variable called now. And then I can define the payload again. So this is our payload. This is pretty similar to what I showed you before. Um, the issuer is the authentication server of CoffeeMesh. CoffeeMesh, if you're wondering, is the fictitious website that I use as a guiding example in my book, Microservice APIs. This is a random ID for a user. It's completely opaque. It doesn't mean anything for the, to the server or to an external user who happens to come across this JSON web token. This token is only meaningful for the authorization server. We have an audience, which is something I call the orders API in my book. And we have the issued at the time property, which is calculated using the date time library. And we're giving the token a life of 24 hours. We're using also the scope property that I showed you before in the token. Now to produce a JWT out of this, we simply do this JWT encode payload equals the payload. Then we use a secret key, which we're going to call secret. And we say that the algorithm is HS256, because this is the algorithm which is used to sign up a token using a secret key. And this is the token that comes out of this process. Now, in practice, most tokens are signed using private and public keys using the RS-256 algorithm. Let's see how we generate those tokens. For this, we're going to need a little bit of code. So I'm going to jump into the text editor to show you how we do that. We are going to define a function called generate JWT. And we're going to use a similar process to what we had before. We're going to define the time now for the issued at the time property of the payload and that is going to be date time now we import the function from the date time module let's do actually utc now so that this is the same everywhere now the payload is issued that is https auth coffee mesh.io so the subject is just give, gonna give it a random number then audience is let's say HTTPS coffee mesh orders and then we have issued at time which is now then we're going to say expiration date, which is now plus time delta hours 24. And we get the timestamp out of this. We import time delta. And now to sign this token with a private key, we have to load the key. Uh, to do that, we need to create a private and a public key from the command line. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we use this function 
we uh, actually this command that is open SSL request this is called x509 certificate this is the type of certificate that is used to sign JSON web tokens I'm giving the certificate a subject directly through the command line if I didn't do that we would be prompted with a long questionnaire about the organization that owns the certificate so let's run this command and out of it we get two files one of them is called private key and the other one is called public key now we're going to use the private key to sign the token and we're going to use the private key to validate the token let's see how we do that so we need to load the private key so let's say private key text equals we're going to use the path library to load the the key that is private key dot pen and we'll read the text so let's load the the library and now the private key is an object that we are going to load using the cryptography library and that is going to be serialization the serialization module of the cryptography library from it we're going to use a function called load him private key and the parameters for this function are private key and code and password is not because this is not a password protected key now we input that and then we use the JWT library to create the encoded token so that is going to be JWT encode payload is the payload the key is the private key and the algorithm in this case is RS256 we need to import JWT and now we can use this library we can use this function to generate JWTs on demand so let's test this out to see how it works And there you go, this is the token that we get when we run this custom function to generate tokens signed with an RS-256 key. Now we can copy this token and paste it in the JWT.io website that I mentioned earlier. And you see that it contains all the information that we included in the payload before. It contains the authorization server, the subject the uh, or the ID of the user, the target, the audience of the token, and the timestamps of when the token was issued and when the token is going to expire. Now let's see how we validate this token using Python. So let's go here to the JWT validator module and let's write some code to validate that token. Let's define a function called decode and validate token. And we're gonna give it the access, it's gonna accept a parameter which is the access token. The first thing we want to get is the list of unverified headers from the token. The reason why we want to get the unverified headers is because we're going to use some of its properties to perform the validation process. Let's import JWT. Now, let's load the certificate x509 certificate equals we're gonna use cryptographies load pen x509 certificate we're gonna load the certificate using the path library again and that is going to be public key we're gonna verify the signature using the public key remember to encode this and we're gonna fetch the public key object returned by this function we import the library we import path as well and now we're going to use this information to validate the token and also to decode its contents so it's gonna be like this decode JWT decode the decode function of JWT performs the validation that's gonna be the access token the key it's going to be the certificate the algorithms is going to be 
an array that comes directly from the unverified headers. So we don't want to have assumptions about the, talk, the algorithm that was used to sign the token. We're going to let the token tell us which algorithm was used to produce it. And then we're going to set the expectations about the audience. The audience should be exactly the same as what we have here, which is this. There's a typo here. Okay, so now let's call this function. Let's copy the token that we generated earlier. Let's paste it here. And we are going to use a uh, for validation here. And let's run the function to see what happens. Oh, there is an error. So we forgot to actually read the text of the um, of the file. So that should be read text and then we encode the text. And that's it. The token is valid. Um, and therefore it's been decoded by JWT and we get the claims, the token claims back after running the validation. Now if we change something in the validation process, let's say we change the string of the audience, then we will get an error. We will, the, the JWT tells us that the audience in the token is invalid but if we did also something like let's say let's say the ex the expiration was set in the past we create a new token with that we use this token in the validation file here uh, let's actually fix the orders so that we don't get that error anymore and if we run the file again now the signature has expired you can see that JWT is working as expected it's raising a, a relevant invalidation error in in each case whenever a token is invalid JWT will raise an appropriate exception telling you why the, to why the token validation failed. Needless to say, if the token validation fails with JWT, you should never accept that token in your server. It means the token is invalid. All right, so this is everything I wanted to say about working with JWTs and Python. You have learned how to produce JWTs and how to validate them. In the coming months, I will produce additional videos showing you how to integrate this code into a web server. I will do that as soon as I can. In the meantime, if you found this video interesting, you will probably be interested as well in my book, Microservice APIs. If you check out the description in the video, you will find a discount code for the book, and you will also find a link that allows you to download two chapters of the book for free. Finally, I also want to say that your support is really important. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, make a comment if you like, and please share the video with your network, your colleagues and friends to expand its reach. And that will support me and help me continue producing more content like this. That's everything I wanted to say. Thanks for watching and see you soon.